In this video, I want to go over uh, things that drive performance in SOLIDWORKS. If you have an assembly that's opening up slow or even drawings, um, this is how you can speed up SOLIDWORKS without making very many sacrifices, if at all, on uh, graphics or performance. So the first thing we'll go through the makeup of SOLIDPART files, uh, talk about what in that makeup starts to raw performance and how the process to open an assembly can be affected by that in general assembly performance with best practices. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the basic drivers of performance in SOLIDWORKS are these. These are the components of a solid part file, right? Um, just like an anatomy class, these, this is the anatomy of a file. We have features make up a small part, the body makes up a bigger part, and the graphics make up a large majority. And these proportions can change depending on the features of the part, but this is generally how it will look. Uh, features, of course, are kind of like the, uh, the blueprint of the part that generate the body. And then calculating the graphics is, uh, is a very large process. So when we talk about graphics, uh, let's talk about what that would look like. We've all had the experience of zooming in on a curved feature in a SOLIDWORKS part and seeing that it looks like a whole bunch of straight lines connected to make something that's curved, right? So when you're looking at a part in its native form in SOLIDWORKS, you are looking at what's called a B-REP body that uh, stands for really boundary representation. In other words, curvature in a B-REP format is known by the CAD program. Every point is known. It's not approximated. But the graphics are an approximation. So that's why you get a bunch of straight lines that start to look like something that's curved because the graphics are approximating the curvature because doing an actual curve would take up a whole lot of power from the system. So calculating these graphics is really concerned with curvature. You'll notice the straight portions of this uh, B-REP, anything straight really is largely taken up by two triangles or three, but very, very few triangles. Now, a curve section has a very dense concentration of triangles. Calculating those is what makes graphics the majority in that pie chart that we looked at, right? So this is curvature. Any kind of fillet or nerves or a helical feature will be your highest uh, performance robbing features in a solid part. So tessellation or triangles that we've talked about, how do they affect performance. To, to uh, answer that question, I've cal or I saved a bunch of parts as an STL file with varying mesh densities. I've changed the deviation and angle of each of these uh, of the same part and calculated how many triangles were generated and what the file size was. And uh, if I look at this plot looking at the number of triangles, you can see we have an exponential relationship of graphical triangles. That's to say, the smaller the mesh, aka the smaller the deviation, the more triangles. And that means more file size as well. Now, I, I used an STL as an example, but the way that uh, BREP body works, it works the same as an STL file, right? So um, by turning up your graphics or by having more curvature, you are generating more triangles. And these triangles can go into the millions in a large assembly. So the question is, if we understand what is causing graphics calculations to be more intense, and we know uh, the relationship between graphics triangles, file size, and everything else. What can we do to optimize performance if we're dealing with a large number of triangles in our graphics? Well, why don't we go through how to find uh, the problem sections of uh, an assembly or a part and optimize that performance. I'll open up SOLIDWORKS. And here in SOLIDWORKS, um, we have uh, a, a, maybe a medium-sized assembly, but this one will do. This one will do what we need. I'm going to uh, jump onto the Evaluate tab. First thing you can do is a performance evaluation. Right, click on this little traffic light, and it gives us some information that um, we have unique parts. We have three sub-assemblies. We have 197 top-level components. Uh, so it gives us a good overview of exactly what we're dealing with. Uh, the next thing that I like to do is an assembly visualization. You can see uh, right now I have this uh, chart set for rebuild time. 
you can uh, select something here or you can go to um, more and we can select custom properties over here so I can choose something like tell me the number of graphics triangles and I have the scale in a way that the most graphics triangles show up as red so I can see that my cylinder head and my engine block uh, both have a large number of graphical triangles. Uh, this has uh, 60,000, this has 37,000, and so on. So when we think about the number of uh, graphics triangles, we can see that if we're going to optimize a part, head, block, valve cover, and some of these bolts are going to be their number one sources of graphics triangles. And that makes sense. We have nerve surfaces on both of these and the bolts are helical features. Those are the biggest offenders for graphic triangles. Uh, likewise, if we look at uh, rebuild time, I'll come over here. Uh, our highest rebuild time is the valve cover followed by the head, followed by the oil pan. And that may be surprising because you wouldn't think that the head would have a higher rebuild time than some of these other more complex components. However, uh, there's often one feature or so that can completely throw you off and, and be a lot more complex for rebuild times or opening times or whatnot. So the, the three metrics I focus on are graphics time, rebuild time, and open time uh, to gauge performance of parts and assemblies. So now that we can diagnose exactly what some of the, the faults are, how do we fix them? I'm going to go to my uh, graphics triangles, right? Let's say that I want to optimize my graphics triangles. You can tell when you're having a graphics problem uh, in several ways. One is your assembly when you go to rotate it is very jumpy. You can see this is rotating very smoothly, but if it starts jumping around and lagging, you may have more triangles than the fill triangle per second rate of your GPU. Uh, it can also manifest itself in another way by if you have a sufficient GPU, but you're running out of memory. Uh, often a good GPU can process a huge number of triangles, but make it a memory issue down the stream. So either of those could be uh, an issue with graphics triangles. Why don't we go uh, into head, our uh, cylinder head here, and say we, this is heavy, let's simplify this. So how can I simplify this cylinder head? With a lot of features, it may be hard to know what the most complicated thing is. And you'd almost think that maybe perhaps some of these complex lofts uh, would be the most uh, offending feature. But don't make those kinds of decisions um, based on just looking at the cylinder head. You can evaluate this performance, again, on the Evaluate tab, and you can choose uh, Performance Evaluation. And here you can see the biggest offenders at the top of the list. One fillet is taking 11.63 seconds of a time, and that is 25% uh, of the total rebuild time. So one feature takes up 25% of the time to rebuild this part. Uh, so what I suggest is you can figure out your top offenders pretty easily. And this is like the 80-20 rule. In an assembly, 80% of your problems are going to come from 20% of your parts. And in a part level, 80% of your problems are going to come from 20% of your features. So you really only have to evaluate just a few features to really optimize this. And I recommend making a configuration. Right? Uh, we just go to this top level, add configuration, and I'll say performance optimized and that's going to be the uh, the active configuration now so I can go filter out for fill at 35 this was our top offender and you'll see it's not really essential uh, to represent the part with so I can suppress that feature and not lose very much of my part and if I ever need to have the complete part or the complete graphical representation of the part, I simply go to Show Component, and boom, my fillet is back. So we'll go back to showing the simplified version. I'll head back to my tree. We'll go to uh, Performance Evaluation uh, now. Uh, whereas before, the rebuild time for one feature was over 11 seconds. Now the longest feature to rebuild is 4.75. So fillet 22 and fillet 20 are uh, both the next longest parts, and it's pretty easy to go look for fillet 22. And actually, I already have an optimized version of this part, so I'll simply uh, open up that assembly uh, in a second. So do that with all of your parts. Um, 
find the highest offending parts in each of the categories, graphics, triangles, open time, rebuild time, and there'll probably be a lot of commonality between them. And then you just open up the offending parts. For instance, helical features are a big offender. So if I take a bolt and uh, make another configuration, this is graphics optimized here. And all I've done is suppress a few features that were um, already unsuppressed. And I've made a much more simple looking bolt and that has increased the performance a lot. Now, so that being done, let me open up my optimized uh, assembly. All right, so you can see that uh, in this new assembly, there is not much happening that uh, really affects the uh, representation of the part. Just a few uh, optimized components with a few features that uh, aren't there as much. Why don't we look at some of the results of what this optimization looks like? So as we went through and found our biggest offenders in graphics, open time, uh, and rebuild time, and then we broke down the parts to an individual level where we found the biggest offenders in the individual parts. After simply doing like the top five parts and doing maybe three to five features in the top five parts, which took almost no time, uh, we've eliminated uh, thousands of graphics triangles. We went from 22.5 million to about 13.5 million. That's a 40% reduction in graphics triangles in just a few minutes of work. Uh, and the rebuild time went from 120, basically 129 seconds to 72 and a half. That's a 43% drop in rebuild time. And uh, the open time, it opened pretty quick at four seconds. So there wasn't much to optimize, but we still had a 16.5% uh, reduction in opening time. So what are some of the other uh, things that can cause issues besides graphics and rebuilds and uh, opening time? So some of the more advanced uh, troubleshooting requires us to, again, look under the hood of SOLIDWORKS and see what's going on when we do certain commands. So when you open the assembly, this is essentially the steps that happen. You open the assembly, it finds the parts on the hard drive, and then it puts the parts that it finds into RAM. And then it asks, has something changed since the last save? And what it's saying is, is the last save date of a part more recent than the last save date of the assembly? And if that answer is no, nothing has changed, then it computes the graphics and it's done. That is a smooth, tight line. That's what you want to be on all the time if you can. If something has changed, it will take the changed components and reload them into the assembly, reinsert them. And once they're inserted, it applies mates to the updated components. And uh, so all the mates are redone. And then it updates the features that are defined within the context of the assembly. So if I have a sketch that references a part in the assembly in order to be fully constrained, it has to redo the sketch or any and all sketches. And then it has to ask, after these updates, has anything moved? And if the answer is yes, it has to reapply the mates to the updated components so that they load into the correct position. And then it has to redo the updated features within the context of the assembly to make sure that that's updated. And then it has to ask that question again. And eventually when you can say no and you get out of this loop, uh, it will compute the graphics and you're finished. So this is a very intensive um, uh, process that has a bunch of both multi-thread and single thread processes. And that's why single thread processor speed is an important metric to get in your hardware for SOLIDWORKS. The single uh, threads uh, will be a lot different if you have a fast processor. So these are the steps that you take. And so you want to avoid anything that would change the assembly. So here's some best practices to, uh, to keep in mind as you work in SOLIDWORKS. Do not use features or parts that are an older version of SOLIDWORKS, cosmetic threads, library parts, solid part files. That will cause you to go into here because you have to reload old components that aren't in the right format anymore. And uh, that includes uh, STEP, STL, other kinds of formats that you might have. I don't think you have an STL in assembly, but uh, dumb solids. Uh, if you can get by without a dumb solid or even you know, make a configuration so that they're not there, do that. Avoid many unique appearances among parts. 
and I'm going to show you some data on using unique appearances because I love real view as much as the next guy. But it's important to know what you're getting into when you uh, use heavier graphics such as real view. So when dealing with imports such as step, uh, delete any bodies that are not needed. Sometimes you'll get a very, very detailed step file or you'll get something with a lot of logos on it. Uh, things with nerve surfaces, if you can get, get rid of as many bodies as possible and still get by, you will have a much higher performance. Uh, step files will slow you down. If you daisy chain mates, instead of referencing them all off of one surface, if you have a line of bolts and you uh, align one bolt to a surface and then you uh, make the next one parallel to that bolt, the next one parallel to that bolt, the next one parallel to that bolt, uh, that will slow you down. And you should probably use the um, lock rotation feature when doing a concentric mate anyway so you avoid that extra mate altogether. Uh, next, uh, check for components that constantly require rebuilding when they haven't been updated or changed. That's a complex issue that is probably too complex for the scope of this video, but your value-added reseller could help you with a solution to those components. Every time you have components that haven't changed but are still being rebuilt, you will see that uh, you are coming down here to load your assembly and it takes a lot longer and requires a lot more performance. One hint to tell if your uh, parts are rebuilt or not is going into the file explorer here. You can uh, look at what's open in SolidWorks. And anything in bold has uh, been updated since its last save. Uh, fortunately, there's nothing here, but if anything had changed and is more recent than the assembly required updating, you'll see it in bold. All right, so when I added 25 unique appearances, to all of the parts in uh, the assembly of the engine. Uh, I had a 121% increase in loading time. So uh, that, that's some data to tell you that be judicious with your unique appearances. Uh, you can even configure those appearances if you want to have them sometime, but you want to have a high performance assembly as well. So uh, one of the easiest ways to get instant performance is to simply Go to Options, Document Properties, Image Quality, and uh, work with these sliders. So the last thing I'll say about this is this is, of course, the BREP tessellation resolution. So if I turn this down to a low resolution and say OK, you can see these don't appear round anymore because the tessellation is very rough. This is, a, of course, very high performance. And if I zoom in, let's say even on this hole, and I say options, properties, image quality, and we'll take it right before the red. You become very round. It's saying we're going to do a lot more straight lines to represent curvature. These sliders are just like the demonstration I did in saving files as an STL and looked at the exponential curve. So that is why when you go to options and uh, adjust your image quality, these ends are red because the very end is that exponential lift that you get. That's why the red zone is marked as red. It is exponentially higher, exponentially more computation. So if you want higher performance, this is a quick and easy way to do it. The other thing that I want to bring up on this graph is as I adjust my deviation, right? I go to a much tighter deviation over here. This is a lot of distance, but the change from here to here vertically is not a lot of performance. Take advantage of that. You can get a much, much higher resolution without very much higher performance at all. So you don't have to knock your sliders all the way down to the bottom to get the performance you're looking for. You can uh, bring them pretty high up before you start having serious sacrifices in graphical performance. Uh, so I hope this video was helpful in getting an understanding of uh, what takes up SOLIDWORKS processing and how to fix it. And I'll see you in the next video.